finally got Boris working. Finally got Boris working. Um, it's not actually very solidly working at the moment, unfortunately, but it's running. The wiring is dodgy, but I've sort of neatened it up a bit, cleaned it up. And in a couple of days, we're gonna get some professional help from Ben. We're gonna both have a look at it and uh, see if we can get it actually a little bit more original. Because there was like a red cable coming off the uh, one of the glow plugs that went into the dash. I was being quite bold then, I just cut it. Nothing's happened, nothing's changed. So <laughs> someone in the previous history has like wired something in the dash off the engine rather than from the battery. So that's the sort of stuff we're dealing with at the moment, which is very fun. But yeah, I just thought, do a little video like this. Probably be quite wobbly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just try to do a new different type of video, just sort of go for a drive and get out. The sun's shining today, you know, slightly different video to what I usually do, but a lot of people are stuck inside. And so am I most of the time. So I'm just gonna go for a bit of a walk, take some photos, go to the moors maybe use the jet oil, make some tea, that sort of thing. And uh, take you along for the ride, really. Don't have Jess with me today, unfortunately, but um, I'm sure we'll make do. Don't wanna to go too far, because you know, if the engine starts to pack up <laughs> on the moors, then it's gonna be a bit boring, really. At least I've got my uh, diesel heater, uh, sleeping bag, and um, food and water and everything, really. So, actually, it'd be quite fun if it did <laughs> break down, but. So, I've just got this. CB radio, it's an Allen 42 by Midland. It's actually a handheld one with batteries, but what's so good about it is that you can actually hardwire it in to the car through mains power and an external aerial, which I relocated onto the wing, and it's working perfectly. I've had a few people on there now, which is cool. It's not really for chatting with uh, truckers on the road, but it's more for days out off road when other mates have got them or if you go to a show or in an emergency you know you might need it but that's pretty cool I'll maybe show you that in a little bit see if we can get chatting with anyone but yeah just thought I'd make quite a standard long video just chatting away hope you don't mind hope you can hear me I'm gonna keep my voice up but yeah it's pretty cool hope you try and get some shots along the way got the drone be good I'm not sure, I might be able to smell some sort of electrical burning smell. I think it may be just left over from when it all happened last time. I've done a few changes in the dash obviously, so hopefully it's nothing too bad. I'm gonna stop in a minute and have a look, make sure it's nothing. Uh, last time I took Boris out when I thought I'd fixed it, I had actually not fixed it. I stopped at this garage I'm going to now realized the speedo was not connected properly and unfortunately when I put it all back together for connecting the speedo I couldn't start it again completely dead to the world and also I tried to spin the speedo thing by letting the car off the handbrake and I was looking down and it was spinning I was going why is it spinning and I looked up and I was rolling and rolled into a, uh, a lamppost which is uh, you know obviously very good thankfully no one was watching but yeah we're gonna go back there now have a look at it, make sure it's not broken still. I uh, hope there's no burning, but yeah, try and carry on with the day, so it should be fun. Alright, so I'm just gonna pull over here. Just, this is where I hit their lamppost. No one saw, thankfully. Just gonna double check it, make sure it's okay. So it's actually sort of under here. I had to take this pipe off when I looked at it last time. It doesn't smell here. You can just smell a bit of oil. It's all a mess, but there's no smoke and it doesn't smell that much. It must be just from last time. Whoa, lots of smoke. <laughs> uh, so I just went to the garage, grabbed some provisions and got some fuel and goodness sake. <laughs> this is not fun whatsoever. This is a bad idea. Why have I done this to myself? Oh no, everything's hot. Right, so it's working again, no idea. Just fiddle with it, works again now. The way I can tell if it's working or not is by leaving the hazards on. If they're not on, it's not working. If they are, there you go. Well. 
if this is a good idea, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. <laughs> maybe I won't go to the moors, maybe I'll just try and find somewhere on the way home. So I've just been searching for somewhere to go and stop and, you know, cook something up and uh, take some photos. Couldn't find anywhere, but then a little sign saying public way down here. So found this and let's see what's the bottom. All I want is just uh, an area that's uh, free of any people in cars and just gonna sit and uh, wait. And this looks pretty perfect to me. This is cool down here, nice. Cool little spot. So, just got here, met a nice lady walking past, there's no one here, which is nice, never been down here before. Just took the thumbnail, there's amazing trees just behind me. And now, it's time to do bacon sandwiches, maybe show you my camera kit, and some coffee. <laughs> I've now got a jet boil, my sort of setup like this, I've got a Trangia with a gas burner as well. But for little trips like this, and uh, making coffee and bacon sandwiches. I've got the uh, the pot support on the jet board, which is pretty cool. Here it is, that's the pot support. You basically just open it out and it means that you don't have to always just use the sort of container for boiling water. It means you can actually cook food on it as well, which is good. So I just use the Trangia pans to cook on top of that. I've never actually done it yet before, but it should be good. Obviously this table is really good here. It's really handy and it's a good space, but if you forget something out of this drawer, unfortunately the actual table blocks it. So bring it down like this and you can get to the first two, but you can't get any deeper than that. And ever since I've actually made the wooden compartments in there, it's even worse. So unless I want to get everything out I need uh, in one place, I sometimes just cook on here, which is quite a good little surface, you know, just uh, pop up here. Has a bit of a slant, so it might all fall over, but we'll uh, try our best. It's also really high here, so I could use a table, but I don't really want to, might be too permanent here. So yeah, it'd be cool. Just got the jet boil, the sort of military one here. I've got the coffee press, which is really good. It means you can use ground coffee. Just the flash, uh, the burner just fits inside, which is really cool. I did have a um, sort of fold out Van Gogh one that gets screws into the top of here, has a long cable and then sort of a pot support that goes on the ground. But this is much quicker, it's neater and um, more versatile, which is great. I'm absolutely loving it so far. So usually you'd just use this, obviously for making coffee and such like. Just pop that on there. But this time, I'm going to be testing out this little pot support, which is pretty cool. Just slots down there. Does it slot down like that? The only problem I think that we're going to have is that. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. It's going to get quite hot quite quickly, so I'm going to chuck the bacon on. Fortunately, don't have any oil, but it is a non-stick pan, so it should be fine. Two at a time for now because it's uh, quite unbalanced. Really raging, <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> Turn that down a bit. It's not quite like backpacking or camping in a sort of on your feet sort of way, but uh, it's also not like a camper van, so you really do have to choose equipment that's small and uh, not too bulky because you know I tried to keep this main area nice and uh, tidy and then sort of try and fit everything either in here in a storage compartment like this one here down the side or under the bed. So yeah, it works for me, and uh, this is going to be pretty cool. Lovely spot. Bit overdone on that bit, but does the trick. Number one, there you go. Just thinking, hope it doesn't not start now and then not be able to fix it because that's sort of a quite steep green lane and it would take quite a big truck to pull me out of there. So hopefully I can get it started so we can turn around and get back out of here. If not, we're going to be camping here on a slant. Um, CB's now been relocated to here which is cool another plates up there hopefully something down here soon should be cool look at these yeah that's nice 
Got a video for the install of that. Got a video for the install of quite a lot of things actually. <laughs> Got new heavy duty flanges and bolts. I saw that the other day. Got the rock sliders. These are all the things that I've already shown you, so no point in doing it. I guess one thing that I've not shown is a snow cow. Not so much the snow, more for sort of mud, leaves, and also for when you're wading. Water ever sloshes over here, doesn't go straight down in and steam up the windscreen. So this is good for that. Just diverts the water away from there, which is nice. One other thing is these all train collective patches. Just had these made up. They're really cool. Nice and cheap. What you do is just iron them onto anything you want, or you can put Velcro on, stick it on. If you've got a collection going up there, you know, that's quite an overlander thing. But yeah, these are cool. Got lots of these going now. So if you want to have a look at the shop, if you've not heard of all train collective, uh, check the link in the description. And there's a shop there and there's a bit of an ethics thing and yeah we're really trying to improve it and keep it going and love being a part of it so it's great just like the uh, sort of cooking setup and camping setup that you do it's all about keeping it neat and getting rid of risks no getting rid of errors and stuff like that so basically what i used to have is a water tank in the drawer it was great it's five liter one it was enough for like little trips and um if you're camping just go and top it up every now and then don't use it too bad too much too you can't wash with it or anything like that but it used to leak and make the drawer moldy in the winter and stuff like that so now i've opted for a tank up here which is actually a 10 litre it's my old diesel heater tank it was never used obviously <laughs> it was uh brand new but i just used a different one and this sort of garden hose so what i've done is tapped a hole through the tank with a uh a spout which is a valve on it as well and a output to a garden type fitting so that you just clip it on here goes down and then to a sort of normal garden hose this isn't great but you know it works quite well what you need to do is uh gracefully climb up <laughs> so that just hangs there like that you just clip it in under there probably will have a bit of air bubbles in it you have to uh, let it drag down with the gravity for a bit first We've also got a valve in the top as well I wouldn't say it's like a perfect solution because like almost the first time I ever tried it it was minus three overnight and it froze so I couldn't use it but um, keeps everything out of the way and uh, puts up on the roof and one other good thing you can do is if you take this little attachment off here you can actually put a garden hose onto here or actually onto the end spout so you've got the male at the top you just put the garden hose onto there fill it up with a hose as well so you don't stick it down so that's really handy as well that's a little tip i saw on someone else's youtube so yeah the uh, top just goes on there clicks in nice and easy apparently you can get some sort of blowback with the gas in these if they attract too much so if you go straight on click it as soon as you can because then it keeps it safe top tip if you're going to make a table like this um on a slant like it is it used to just with this would have just rolled down here basically just slid off but now i've got a rubber matting i actually can't remember where i got it from but yeah no it's really good if you're cooking on here if that slid off into here be bad news if you've got oil or any flame you know stuff like that great little top tip just get a little textured rubber mat that's really handy so this is my camera bag not my uh, main one this is just the one i sort of carry with me when i'm going on a trip out like this to get some photography or you know a video like this i'm actually shooting this on the iphone uh so i don't use my proper kit it's a bit easier to do it on the iphone some videos i do do on my two bigger cameras but for stuff like this i find it fun just to run and gun with my little iphone but um i've seen a lot of videos sort of like this where people do talk about their camera kit but they skip over it because they know lots of people don't really get it so i'm really into it because it's my job i am a filmmaker photographer you know, income i'll put a link in the description below to my show reel if anyone wants to see that but yeah what it is is a uh, 5d mark IV here but this is a 24 105 lens that's a great all-round video lens i use that on my fs7 my main big sony camera as well that's a fantastic little combo um i like to shoot all my videos on this one because it's very variable in zoom from wide to, sh to sort of long and also it's got a stabilized lens so it's not too shaky so i complaints about that before my channel <laughs> Battery and battery charger for the little monitor here. That can go on either camera of mine. Little Swit one, I think a couple of hundred quid. Uh, that goes on to the top of the camera so you can actually see either yourself if you're shooting yourself or you can see your shots a bit better and brighter as well. Sort of a very sought after lens there. It's a 50mm 1.2. So very, very blurry background. Great for portraits. Not good for filming because it's a bit shaky, but 
you know, if you've got a tripod, then you can shoot that. It makes everything look really nice. Do a lot of product stuff with that one. It's really nice. Put that in there. Tiny little gorilla pod for the GoPro 5. I think it's a 5 I've got now. It's amazing. I only got it a few years ago. It's already outdated so much. Everyone knows about GoPros. You know, you can stick that anywhere you want. Well, not everywhere you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, just use it as a second angle. That's when I do my sort of install films. That's really handy. This little Patagonia bag has just got like memory cards, tape, cleaning brushes, easy peasy bits like that. And here is my drone. I actually swapped from the Mavic Pro recently to this Mavic 2. No, Mavic Mini 2. Oh, God, I think it's called that. <laughs> no, DJI Mini 2. DJI Mini 2. Really fantastic. 4K raw photos was the big seller for me. I was going to get the one before, but it didn't do raw. New controller with that one as well. All built in. I've got that in the bag. I need another battery for that, but just fits in my bag. Just like another lens, which is crazy. You can get lots of different angles. I might even just go pop it up now and get some shots with that. Down here, Sennheiser radio mics. They're fantastic. I usually use those for my install films so I can walk around and uh, you can hear me properly everywhere I go. They're great. They're actually sort of outdated now. Road do some very small, neat ones now. So I'm thinking about getting those. These are sort of playing up a little bit, but yeah, that's generally all of it. Use that for my B camera for filming and photography main camera drone. My big main camera is at home, which is an FS7, but I shoot a lot of stuff on the iPhone. And then I edit it on Premiere Pro. A lot of people say, oh, what do you shoot on? What do you edit with? But you know, you can shoot on an iPhone. You can edit this on, on your iPhone on iMovie as well, and it'd be just as good and maybe even quicker and easier. As I was flying around just then taking photos and video of Boris, I remembered how close I am to Berry Pomeroy Castle. This is actually a part of their land, so green lane that's just next to the entrance. So I flew over there, got some shots and it's shot at the moment, so it's nice to be able to see it from the air and uh, also as the sun's going down, it looks amazing. So just packing up now, a uh, few people walking around. Nice to be sort of parked on your own though. It's an amazing place. Got my uh, little ridge monkey type thing here. It's been in the back for ages, so I need to give it a good clean. I'm gonna take it in and um, put it in the dishwasher, actually. Got my little coffee from earlier, tripod there. And look at this. This is one of my homemade uh, gear sticks, gear knobs, wooden ones with a thread on the bottom. This is for Leo and Frida, somewhere wilder. Need to send that out, it's just been drying there now. I've actually got a new one, so I'll show you that now. That's actually what I was gonna show you earlier. Look at that. Nice and clean, very neat different to the old one. So here is my one. This time I've uh, actually put these little wire marks in you, spin it on the drill, get a piece of garden wire, hold it up against it like that, and it, it cuts the groove in, and also makes it nice and dark. So a little tip from Chris Powell, a friend of mine, looks much better now, it's really cool. And Frida and Leo are gonna get the other one I made. I think it just makes it look really nice and cool. Also had this powder coated recently. This is by uh, Evolution 4x4. Rob actually thankfully uh, let me swap mine for his and uh, it's nicely matte coated, so there's not too much shiny uh, silver in here anymore, which is nice. And here's my CB. This panel was faulty earlier, because uh, I've been playing around in there. But now it's back on and working. So you can, doubt we can get anyone out here, but um, can do a little search. Recently I found a few people chatting about Chinese takeaways and anything, <laughs> literally anything. Some people you can't even understand. Scan again. Oh, it keeps finding channels, but I can't see anything. I can't hear anyone. You can just scan through the channels like this. You turn the squelch up, which is that. You just sort of filter that out. You can search for it. But obviously at the moment we're in the valley here. The whip's only a metre long one. And uh, yeah, there's no one on here at the moment. One day, hopefully we can get back to shows again and um, try and contact some people out of the shows and chat away which is pretty cool just nice to have one in, in board on board there and it's really cool that you can actually uh whip it off like this you just whip it out of there put a little aerial in the top and then the battery on the bottom and you can carry it around handheld help people out when you're on the lanes or if you're hiking you can use it just in case you need maybe some safety sort of stuff but only reaches about half a mile then but cool that you can offer that both both sides of it really nice that's a uh, allen midland allen 42 Alan Partridge 42, no affiliation or anything there, but just uh, I think you should know about this. Pretty cool, pretty handy. 
Right, so it's a moment of truth. Let's just hope it starts. And once it starts, fingers crossed, let me have to get out of here. We're in a bit of a slippery valley, so. <laughs> it's not starting, brilliant. Well, hazards are working. Who knows what it is yet? Just wiggle some of the loom behind the engine, it works again. And works for the whole time when you were driving as well. Weird. As I said, getting it fixed this Friday at the moment. I'm gonna go and get it fixed on Monday, which will be good. So yeah, let's continue the journey, hey? It's a bit stressful, but at least now I know that, fingers crossed, if that does happen, then we can get out. The reversing here is pretty scary. Not scary, it's pretty steep, slippery. Could just reverse the whole way out, but I'm gonna reverse back, turn around in the valley, put a diff lock on so I don't lose any traction. Should be alright. You probably can't see anything. Let's do that. Traction gone. Way! Whoa! Very slippery. Whoa! A bit of off road in there, so slippery. Christ, slippy on the spot. That's ridiculous. Well, came for a cup of tea, got some green onions, which is pretty fun. Diff lock out, back to normal gears. There we go. Right. Well, been inside quite a lot at the moment, obviously, lockdown and everything, but nice to come out on a trip like this. Bit of jeopardy, bit of photography coffee, baking sandwiches, actually slipping around. It was quite fun actually. Good little bit of manoeuvring on that really slippery valley and uh, see the castle, watch the sunset, you know, pretty cool. Nice to just get out bits and pieces like that as much as you can. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this long video. I can't imagine how long it's going to be. Uh, just to let it run really. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. Give me a like and subscribe. I don't like to be too cheesy and say all that sort of stuff, but you know, it really does help. If you subscribe, you can see more. I'm going to be doing more tutorials and installs, and this is what we're doing during lockdown. So what's it going to be like when we're free to do whatever we want again? Who knows? Cheers for watching, and uh, hope to see you on the next one.